Hey gang, I'm Paul Steinbeck. Welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to remove this worn out wooden door and its frame and replace it with a brand new door that's gonna last a lifetime. All right, when your friends and family come over, the first thing they see is the front door. Maybe you're embarrassed about your front door and you have them come in the back door. But they take a lot of abuse, right? On this particular front door, the bottom rail is all cracked. I've seen them where they're rotten. We've all seen that. And we've all seen where the door jam gets rotten at the bottom. Also on this door, the weather stripping's all dried out, it's cracked, and the threshold is absolutely trash. And we're gonna show you how to change all that with common tools. Make sure you stay tuned for the whole video though, because we're gonna show you how to do it and maintain the exterior casing. In fact, we're not gonna remove it at all, so we don't have to run caulk down here between the casing and the brick. And you get to save that doorbell. So let's come back inside and get started. The first thing we're gonna do is remove the hardware, the casing, and the threshold, and get this door off the hinges. Let's get started. All the hinge pins are out and a little tip about these things they are very greasy I always grab them by the top just like that use a paper towel if you have to because if you get that stuff on your fingers now it's gonna be all over your brand new door and never throw those on white carpet all right I'm gonna set it right here done now our next step we're gonna remove the interior casing and our threshold alrighty guys I'm ready to remove this casing and what I use is a stiff bladed putty knife look at that thing it hardly bends at all and it's got a chisel edge. I carry this in my bag right there and I use it for everything. What I like to do, I'll just start right here and pry it off and it works great. Now all this gets repainted, so I'm not worried about the paint. If you are worried about the paint in your house, get a utility knife and make a cut right here between the casing and your paint and you won't peel the paint off. We've all been there before. So let's get this casing down. All right, gang, now that the casing is off, it's time to tackle the threshold. Now this one is screwed down. Yours may or may not be. If you don't see any screws across here, it's probably fastened to the door jam. This one is screwed, so let's see if we can get it up. Sometimes these can be a bear. Let's see how we do. Look at that. That's a drywall screw. Easy. Look at all the different screws in the threshold. That kind of stuff drives me crazy. How hard is it to get five screws that match? <laughs> Reaching for my stiff bladed putty knife. All right, a little bit of a fight, but it should come up. And there we go. All right, let's get the vacuum and clean all this up. All right, nice and clean, just like we like it. And that is all the casing we need to remove. Remember, we said earlier in the video, we're gonna save the exterior casing. We're not gonna touch it. It's gonna save ourselves a ton of time. But before we do that, before we separate the door jam from the casing, we're gonna get in here inside with a reciprocating saw and cut the nails that attach our door jam to the house framing. Yours might be screwed on. You gotta find those screws. Ours are nailed. Let's go get the reciprocating saw. All right, gang, we got all our nails cut. That took about 30 seconds. Now it's time for the magic. We're gonna save that exterior casing. Same tool, we put it right here. I'm gonna drive it in with my hammer. You'll see it start to open up. That's all we need. All right, I think I will get the utility knife and make a pass around here so we don't chip the paint. Gang, now we're opened up all the way around. All I need is enough to get this blade in there, and that's gonna be plenty. Let's start at the bottom and go find those nails. All 
All right, we got all the nails cut. That was very easy. Now it's ready to tip this thing out of here. But 81.9% of you aren't subscribed to our channel. So help us cut that number and tip the scales and please consider subscribing to our channel. Boom. There we go. All right, I got the door frame out of here and check it out. Look at these special shims. It looks like uh, those special half inch drywall shims. Pretty cool. They didn't let anything go to waste. And on this side, what is this? That's a piece of door casing. One shim right behind the strike. Good job, guys. Our next step, we're gonna pull all these nails out. These are the ones we cut. Let's pull all of them out, get this all cleaned, go grab our door and give it a test fit. All right, before we go grab our door and test fit it, there's one thing we noticed that's gonna be a little bit of a problem, and it's gonna be this parquet floor. Our threshold is actually gonna hit it. If we come over here and I put my tape measure against the exterior casing, our door is four and nine sixteenths wide right there. So it's gonna hit this. I mean, look at that piece right there. It's totally rotten. So I think just to help ourselves out, let's just remove this whole row and then we'll fix it later. And that'll make it much easier to put the door in. You might just be able to pull it up as one piece right now. I think, oh yeah, look at that. That's nuts. <laughs> Easiest parquet demo you ever did? Yes. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, we may have a bigger project here. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna push it up against the casing. And that's the idea, gang, right there. Now, there are a couple things we had to do to get this thing to fit. Let's start down here at the threshold. Remember I said earlier in the video that sometimes the thresholds are attached to the door jams? Well, that's exactly how this one is. There are no fasteners through the threshold into the slab or your subfloor. It is attached to the jam and it's exactly 36 inches wide and I've done this a bunch of times and it's always fit right here between the existing casing. Now this one we were a little shy so a little bump here, a little bump here gave us that 32nd of an inch on each side that we needed. It fits great. At the top we had plenty of room right here below the header but the drywall was hanging down a little bit so we had to trim it. So now we're ready for our next step. Check it out gang, I got my four foot level here. Let's check this casing for plumb. Look at that, it is about a quarter inch out and four feet, pretty bad. Let's put it up against our framing. It's dead on. So that's a case where the framers were better than the finish carpenters. But you know, the finish carpenters are putting this against brick. This is an uneven surface. But we're gonna leave this here and my plan is to put the door up in its place, we're gonna put a screw in the top on both sides and get that door perfect just where we want it. Alrighty guys, it's very important to seal between your subfloor and your slab and the bottom of your threshold. Some of those thresholds aren't flat on the bottom. There's a void. And if you put a bead of sealant right here without checking your threshold, it could be that that sealant ends up in the void and it's not doing anything. So we checked our threshold and I know that if I put a bead here, and then for extra insurance, another bead here, I'm gonna have good contact between my sealant with the slab and my threshold. So let's run these two beads and we're about ready to tip that door up. And what are you using? What am I using? Loctite Power Grab. Alrighty guys, we got our sealant down. I'm gonna tip the door to me. The door's gonna get me lined up and I'll tip it up into that sealant. That door's pretty soundproof. I was two feet away from you, could barely hear you. Really? Yeah. Give her a good push on the on the on your right. Nice. Yep. Right on. So now you can open the door, let it sit like that so it's safe. We're gonna remove these two pieces of weather stripping and put our screws in the top. And I'll show you how this stuff works. See that? There's this spline and it goes in a groove right here. Make sure you pull from back here. If you pull from here, Sometimes this can tear. And I just noticed this thing's damaged. Look at that. I'll have to change it. I don't know if that happened when they were routing this, but it seems like this wouldn't be on here. But it's always something, right? I just pull these off and get our screws in. There we go. I'm pre-drilling the hole for our screws and it's gonna be behind the weather stripping. So when we put it back, you won't see the screws. All 
Alrighty gang, we've got one screw here, way up high on the strike side, and one screw here, way up high on the hinge side. And we adjusted them back and forth, moving the entire frame until our door was plumb. When we close the door and put a level right here, it's plumb. But come on inside, let me show you what we found out. So remember, our threshold is level, and the door is plumb. But look at the reveal on the top. You see how it's more narrow on my right side than the left? I want all that to be even, right? And why is it like that? Well, it may just be a manufacturing defect. You can actually see where this head jam is a little higher on this side than this side. So I'm actually gonna use those screws, tighten this one, and it's gonna pull that over when I loosen this one, and it's gonna correct this gap. Let's do that real quick. All right, that is so much better. This reveal is perfectly even all the way across the top, and now it's time to start working on the reveals along the sides of the door. And as you can see, we got a big gap here, and it is tight on this side. Now, sometimes you can fix that with these wooden shims, just like this, between the framing and our door jam, moving it back and forth. And we fought with it a while. You can see this big pack here at the bottom, but we eventually realized we're not fighting the framing in this house or the drywall or anything like that. We're actually fighting the door manufacturer. We realize that when these hinges are closed, those two halves are almost touching. And if those two halves are almost touching, that's why we have such a thin reveal here and a big reveal here. And so this whole door needs to go that way. And while I'm on the subject of the door manufacturers, check this out. I see this on every door I install. We've got CNC routers and all these manufacturing plants. And look at this. That looks like it was done by a third grader. The depth isn't consistent and it's not even square or straight. Unbelievable. If I ever get to tour a door plant, I'm gonna go right to that station. I'm gonna ask those guys, how come it's like that? Why Dang, can't you well, get now it we can't, Now we can't tour any door plants. Well, they might now you're on give the list. us an invite. <laughs> and you probably notice I changed shirts. Well, that's right, it's the next day. We realized last night that we weren't gonna win the battle on this door with these wooden shims. So I went home last night and realized I gotta make a different kind of shim. So this is what I made. I made these out of polyethylene and they're made to go behind the hinge. We're gonna show you that in a second. And you can buy shims like this online. Companies like easyshims.com. We're not sponsored by them, but we always like to shout out companies that make a great product. So that's gonna fit behind the hinge. Let me show you how it's gonna work. We're gonna come over here. We're gonna leave the door in place. We're gonna remove these three screws, fold that over, put as many of these as we need. I actually have two thicknesses and put it back, do one at a time and get our reveal perfect on this side. Then we're gonna work on that side. All right, that's looking so much better. We put a thick shim here and a thin one here. I made 12 of those things and I just needed two of them. They need to start manufacturing those little plastic <laughs> shims with the doors. It should come in the kit. Yeah, exactly. But speaking of the kit, I didn't get the kit for this door that has these little plugs and the longer screws that go from the hinge into the framing. So what are you gonna do? All right, so remember earlier we said sometimes you can use these shims here to adjust the door. That's exactly what we're gonna do with the top one. Check it out. See, I'm a little tight right here. I want that to be a little bigger. See what, I, see what happens when I open that up with my hand? So we're gonna take this pack of shims right here, and that's how I stack them, so that they're parallel right here. Put it right in there, and now it's perfect. So let's open the door, and drive these long screws through the hinges into the framing, and then I think we're about ready to start this side. And we do need one more set of shims right there. We and, won't forget it. And didn't this door manufacturer leave a hole in the hinges? They only put in three screws instead of four? Right. And that fourth hole is for a longer screw that they give you that goes right there. It didn't come with this door, I forgot to check, but I found these black Torx drive screws. These are number nines, not a number eight, not a number 10, a number nine, and they fit perfectly on hinges. Right on. All right. All right, look at this gang. Another thing I noticed, the factory left this screw out, intending that hole to be the one for the long screw. But if you put a long screw on there, chances are, you're gonna be right at the intersection of the drywall and the two by four or the two by six, whatever you have at your house. The long screw needs to go here. It's further this way into the framing. So just one more thing I noticed. All right, now that all our shims are in, let me close the door, check our reveal. All right, nice. So my reveal here 
nice and consistent, and it's the same as this one. Once we get this side dialed in, it's going to be all the same all the way around. Now you'll notice we did put the wooden shims at each hinge location, that's absolutely vital. And that screw we talked about goes all the way through, right through these shims. But the real hero of this installation was those plastic shims I made. I may have to order some online, get tired of making them, and I'm just going to have to carry them with me when I install doors, knowing that I'm going to have this battle to fight. So now that the top is done, the hinge side is done, all that's left is the latch side. And it's easy, because we don't have any hinges to battle. We just pack that out with wooden shims exactly where we want it, put our screws in. Let's get to it. Check it out guys, we got all our shims in and we are done with the installation of that door except for a few little things. But look at that, that reveal is the same all the way around. And there was a time there where I didn't think that was going to happen, but we made it work and this side couldn't be easier. We just add shims, remove shims as we need it to get this perfect. And one thing we didn't show was how many times we opened and closed this door. I'd say probably four or five dozen, right? 100%. Every time you add a shim, close the door, check it. Drive the screw, close the door, check it. Back the screw out, add a shim, put the screw back, check it. But it's all worth it because you're going to be going out of this for a long time. And you're going to notice it when it's perfect, at least I do. You know what I'm talking about. So let's cut these shims off and uh, this side's going to be pretty easy. This side's a little more difficult. We put the shims behind the hinges, so it's kind of hard to come in at an angle. I can get from this side with my saw, but just make sure you don't damage your hinge. Let's grab the buzz saw and cut those off real quick. Alrighty gang, it's looking good. Now obviously we're going to spray foam right here all the way around for some insulation. We're going to get our plugs to cover up our screw heads, a brand new lock set, fresh coat of paint over our new casing in our door. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to last another 50 years. And we can tell from here that you're battling your like button manufacturer just like we were battling the store manufacturer. We had to fix it with some special shims. Now that you know how to make those shims, you can adjust that like button, get it perfect just the way you like it. Absolutely smash it for us. And watching the video all the way to the end is one of the best things you can do to help us out. We really appreciate it. And don't forget to get down below in the comments. Leave us your own tips and tricks. Ask some questions. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you on our next video.